As the world is rushing to find a way to combat the virus, let's speak now to Dr. Mohamed Munir. He's a virologist at Lancaster University and joins me now. Doctor, thanks for joining us on the program. Uh, I want to start off with some uh, unsettling comments first from an epidemiologist from Harvard who is saying that as much as 70 percent of the world's population could get coronavirus, not very comforting, and that it's almost inevitable that the virus will impact the entire globe. Do you agree with that? Well, based on the history of the virus, the way it's spread and uh, in a very short time it has taken over the whole globe, uh, it is pretty clear that the impact would be significant and it would be a lot more than what we have already seen. Uh, however, how much percentage of the number it would infect is really uh, uh, down to the overall scenario, especially the control measure to be put in place and overall world preparedness. We do understand that the epidemiological modeling or mathematical prediction, these are really helpful in showing showcasing the uh, worst case scenario, but we are really uh, looking forward for the uh, consolidated effort from the globe to put in place all the control measures, um, uh, and once those are put in place, uh, we don't really see that the impact would be that large. We know that uh, scientists are working on finding a cure for this virus, um, but why is it so hard to find a cure, and for that matter, a vaccine which we've been told is um, potentially 18 months off? Well, finding uh, therapeutics or the vaccines are really uh, long-term solutions. The One of the primary reason is that developing vaccine or therapeutics is not really time-taking. However, there are uh, uh, pre-established procedures for the safety and efficacy of the vaccine that required clinical and pre-clinical trials, which are really uh, 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 time-consuming, uh, especially involving animals and really testing that this vaccine is really helpful in protecting the infection. So that is really the time-taking process. But the good thing uh, with this uh, Wuhan uh, coronavirus, no COVID-19, is that we have had some information from the previous uh, cousin uh, SARS coronavirus, which are being exploited at this moment. And we are looking forward to trim some part of the time that is required to make the vaccine available. But as yet, there is no vaccine or therapeutic recommended. The only option we left with is to have a very good control measures put in place. What's the most critical, critical aspect of managing um, an epidemic like this? And what are some of the lessons that we could potentially learn um, from this outbreak going forward with future outbreaks? Well, this uh, uh, outbreak, the entire scenario, has uh, uh, really taught us few uh, lessons already in this short time. The first thing is that uh, 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 fair communication is the key, and timely communication is an important to devise any control strategies. For example, if we look onto the very first weeks of this outbreak, there was a report from the Chinese uh, that there is no human-to-human -human transmission, and that was the time the major uh, spread of the infection uh, occurred. And later, it was identified that the human-to-human -human transmission is possible. So any mistake in handling and preparedness of this uh, kind of infection could be very lethal and could be very hard coming in, in the coming time. And especially okay. at this moment, we do see that some of the countries are very well prepared, yet there are countries okay. that have very little control measure in place. All right. Thank you so much for your thoughts today, Dr. Mohammed Munir. And